All right, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at these graphs. So the first graph is velocity versus time. The second graph is position versus time. The velocity at time zero was zero meters per second. After one second, it was going two meters per second. After two seconds, four meters per second. Three seconds, six. Four seconds, eight. And five seconds, 10. So we can see that this is a line. And we can draw a line to best fit this data. So here's our line. And to emphasize what we were saying before, that the average velocity between 0 and 1 second is this velocity in the middle. Let me switch to another color. I'll switch to green. So the average velocity is in the middle of these two times. Um, and in the next time interval, we had said that the average speed between time one second and time two seconds was the average of two and four. And we can say that that average speed is the middle of two and four because we can see that it's increasing at a constant rate. So this is just a way of visually seeing why we were saying up further above here that the average velocities are just the middle. So here we said the average velocity was 1, which is the middle of 0 and 2. Here we said the average velocity was 3, which is the middle of 2 and 4. And looking at that graph, hopefully it's more clear how, um, how we can say that. OK, let's take a look at the next graph. This is position versus time. So we'll plot these points in green. So at time 0, the position was 0. At time 1 second, the position was 1. At time 2 seconds, the position was 4. 3 seconds, the position was 9. At 4 seconds, the position was 16. And at 5 seconds, the position was 25. It, obviously, this is not a straight line, but this is a typical curve in mathematics that we get when one variable is being squared. So do you know the name of this shape? That's right, it's a parabola. I'm going to try to draw this as a smooth curve, but we'll see how it turns out. Uh, that was pretty good. Okay, so this fact that this is curved comes from that equation we had right above, the displacement of something while experiencing constant acceleration is equal to one half times the rate of acceleration times the time interval squared. I'm going to try to relate this back to what you have learned in algebra. In math, we usually use x and y as our variables. And to get a curve of this shape in math, this would be the equation y equals x squared. But here we're doing physics. We're applying this math to the real world. So we're not dealing with position, we're dealing with time. And so our variable, let me use a different color there. So our variable is going to be delta t, not x. and for position over here, it's going to be x, not y. So, um, so I made that x into a delta x to show um, the change in position from starting at zero. Anytime you have an object accelerating, it's always going to be experiencing increasing velocity and so the steepness of the line is going to be increasing more and more. You're going to get a parabolic curve anytime you have an object which is accelerating. And we'll see next week that anytime we have an object decelerating, we also get a curve, but the curve will be um, the will be flipped basically. All right, let's take a look at the example problem. Example one reads: A motorcycle accelerates at a rate of three meters per second squared, starting from rest. A, how fast will it be going after eight seconds? 
So how fast after 8 seconds? We're going to be trying to find its final speed and that's going to equal its initial speed plus its change in speed due to acceleration. Acceleration times time. So the initial velocity is 0 meters per second plus rate of acceleration of 3 meters per second times 8 seconds. So we get for a result 24 meters per second. How far will it have traveled after 8 seconds? Here's where we're going to use the formula that we wrote above. The displacement of something that is accelerating from rest equals one half times the rate of acceleration times time of accelerating squared. So it's going to be one half times three meters per second squared times eight seconds squared. So we do our order of operations. First we square the 8. So now we have 1 half times 3 times 64. And then at this point I would do 1 half of 64, which is 32. And 32 times 3, which is 96. So it will have traveled 96 meters. And I'm going to come up here and put a box around my first answer too a good practice to get into. I'm going to show you in orange over here how some students like to think of this problem and why it's incorrect. So you don't really need to write down what I'm writing down here. Some students would like to say, oh, displacement, okay. I know that that is speed times time, which is true, but you have to use the average speed here. So they would say, um, they would like to use their answer from A, which was 24 to say 24 meters per second times 8 seconds and 24 times 8 is close to 25 times 8 which is 200 uh, take away 8 so that's 192 meters but notice that they ended up with an answer here that was twice as big as it should have been 192 compared to 96 Oops. So here's our 192 compared to 96, what we correctly get. So notice that it's twice as big because they didn't realize that they should have used the average velocity here, V average. When the V average, starting from rest, zero, and going to a final speed of 24 meters per second, means that the V average was actually 12 meters per second. And if you do 12 times 8, you will get 96 meters. Okay, I'd like you to try number 2 on your own, and please, scholars, if you have questions about what we did in this, this is pretty heavy on the math. So write down some questions that you would like to discuss in class, and um, we'll see you tomorrow.